Good morning, my guys. How are we feeling this fine All Hallows Eve? Um, how are we doing with our TBRs? How many books do you need to read today? Um, let me know. Let me know at all. I'm sad that this is the last day of the readathon. Um, but all good things will come to an end. This is definitely the best round of the book Oblathon that I've ever hosted. I don't care if you disagree with me, all right? Because, like, I've had the best time. I've actually just finished a book, book number 12, for roll number 13, because I DNF'd one. And it is now my best reading month ever. I beat August. So I've been having a grand old time. But good morning to y'all. How you doing? Good morning. Uh, Starling House of Crows and Ravens. That is a very good pick for the prompt. Hoping to finish Savage Lands today. Well, I have just done roll number 14. And I have Wildlands by Stacey Marie Brown. I danced with the Dice of Death and I would because I finished my book this morning, the book that was supposed to be my last book of the month. And I was like, what do I do? I've got seven hours of sprints today. Like, what am I supposed to do? The sensible thing would have been to just pick a book off my November TBR and make a head start. But I was like, no, you know what? There are many prompts coming up that I can fit, or half of the prompts roughly that were coming up could have fit a book from my TBR. And I rolled. And I won because this is a November TBR book. I obviously don't intend to finish it today, but I just wanted to use the board to select my first book of November, essentially. And that's worked out really well because it'll fit for the first Cleo Ship prompt as well. It is because remember when I when I had August, which was my best reading month of all time, it was like, this is definitely an anomaly. Like I will very rarely ever read 5,000 pages again. And here we are two months later. Really trying to finish the unfortunate side effects of heartbreak and magic today, but I don't really believe in myself. I think you can do it, Lauren. And I literally don't believe in anything. So if I believe in you, you should believe in yourself. Oh, 19 minutes left of the battle drum. Love that for you. Bone Witch. Hey, congratulations. Um, finish my audiobook of HMRC and potentially Fortuna. Um, it is 406 pages. I know because the prompt that I landed on was Dice Roll Roulette. And I got the perfect roll for Dice Roll Roulette. I rolled an 8, which is between 375 and 824 pages, which is so many books, <laughs> essentially. Hello. Welcome to your first reading sprint, Megan. I hope you have a good time. Oh, see. I believe in Lauren, but I'm not sure if I believe in you. This sounds like it could be a struggle for you. But I mean, never say never. Am I right? Who thought I would have been on roll number 14 this month? Never me. Best month ever. Going to finish book number 13. Honestly, we are slaying this readathon. Trying to finish in my dreams, I hold a knife and make a start on the Savior's Champion. Nice. You've been doing that for a while, Luna, but I believe that today is the day that you can do it. Uh, 108 pages left of the shadow of what was lost. Very nice. Just a reminder as well, I know most of you know, but because these are public sprints, I am going to struggle to click on everyone's comments, so I'm going to jump around a lot. Um, but I apologise, and I definitely do appreciate y'all being here. There's just so many of you in your chassis bunch, I can't keep up. Um, there is one that's really big, and it is the last one, which I think is about 500, maybe 600 pages. But the rest of them stay around. Like, this is bigger than book three, I think. So they're all around 400 pages, apart from that last one. Uh, reading Murder in the Family by Cara Hunter, because it sounds fun for Halloween, because it's crime. It does. It does sound fun. Hello, fan from Malaysia. Thank you for joining started fourth wing i hope you enjoy it uh rolled double and got ghosties and jigsaw hoping all of our demise kind of fits both prompts it does it does i was like i'm not sure if you can get the ghosts in there but you can for sure it does uh still have i feed it to the beast and the beast is me on my tbr after i finish lord women don't think that will happen today because i have three hours of uni and a movie date with my partner i'm excited about your movie date though like guys it's halloween don't stress it normally i do i always do the book off burnout on the final day of the readathon 
but it's Halloween. So I'm going to be clocking off at five today. This is my work day today. And after five, I'm going to work out. I'm going to wash my hair because I need to film a mega wrap up tomorrow. And I'm going to watch a scary movie, but not a scary movie, probably Scream 2, if I'm being honest. Um, but make sure you have fun, spooky day activities as well. 18 books. That is impressive. That is very impressive. Going to finish at least book 15 for the month. Oh, y'all doing so well. Hello. Almost finished with The Witches Back by Sarah M. Morgan. Also reading Six Scorched Roses. If I finish both today, I read 12 books this month. Very good. Watching Hocus Pocus tonight. Cute. Already watched a Halloween movie for today. I spent all of the... Well, I actually read quite a bit in the weekend. I finished you again on Sunday morning, but I read a lot on Saturday with you guys. Um, and then I started The Fall of House Usher. I watched three episodes. And then I did sprints with my patrons on Sunday. But before I did that, like I postponed the start of the sprint so I could watch another episode of The Fall of House Usher. And then after sprints, I watched another four episodes and finished it and still managed to read two books over the weekend and be starting book 14 for the readathon. Like when I rolled on Sunday morning for prompt number 13, I thought that was it. I actually was pacing myself so that it would take me three days to read that book. And it was just a really quick read, so I've already managed to finish it. <laughs> Uh, gonna finish Swimming in the Dark, and after that, not so sure between Tender of the Flesh or Days at the Morisaki Bookshop. I feel like for Halloween, Tender as the Flesh is more the vibe, but we're going into like cozy fantasy fall time, which for me, like November's where the big like hardcore fantasy drive starts kicking in. Um, and I feel like Days at the Morisaki Bookshop is definitely more cozy. Got work tonight, so this is about as Halloween as it's gonna get. Oh no. Um, it is either my favourite or second favourite Mike Flanagan series. Previous to this, my favourite one has been Hill House. Um, it's like, I loved it. It's very Burton-esque. They feel like the House of Usher feel like the Adams Family. And I enjoyed it so much more than I liked Wednesday. It has like Final Destination vibes, um, which I loved. And it's just, oh, I just love the way that Mike Flanagan does twists. Like, the way that everything comes together at the end, it's beautiful. Um, but Hill House, you know, like, he's just such a classic. Like, you don't know which is my favourite. I think that Hill House is still the scariest of all of them. But, and I love the way that Hill House comes together as well. Reminds me, watching The Fall of House Usher reminded me of watching season one of American Horror Story. You know, when you realise, like, the twist in, in season one where, like, and it just, I, I remember that just blowing my entire mind. I stood up all night to watch season one of American Horror Story. And Mike Flanagan is like American Horror Story, but never goes downhill. And well, I didn't love Midnight Mass. But The Fall of House Usher was so good. Going to watch Halloween Ends this evening. Nice. Oh, you're getting a takeaway. I can't get a takeaway today because um, with Curtis was hungover for two days after the Halloween party you went to on Saturday. So I had to put the food that I was going to have on Sunday in the freezer because it, it just wasn't going to happen. You know, like he, I think he ate two chicken strips. So I had girl dinner again on Sunday, which means that I now have to cook um, the meal that I would have had yesterday, today. So sadly, no takeaway for me, but there will definitely be a movie. I'm sorry that you're not feeling well, Scarlett, but I'm glad that you were able to join us. I will never read Tender as the Flesh, like 100%, like not my kind of thing. Um, but I, I, the people that, that like it, like it. This sounds perfect. The audiobook for Daisy Jones and the Six is good. It's full cast. It's the preferable way to consume the story, I would say. Um, I don't like the music industry. Like, I, it's not a topic that interests me. Like, I'm not out here reading rock star romances and, like, books about the music industry. I just don't care. I'm more like an old Hollywood kind of girl. Um, so I never would have... I only read it because everyone said that it's really good and the audiobook made that better for me than it would have been if I'd have read it with my eyes. Um, because it's like it's like an audio drama if you listen to the audiobook. This is fair. 
There's um, jump scares in the fall of House Usher, but it's not like... I don't know. Like, I can handle the jump scare. It's stuff... I have intrusive thoughts in general, so... I struggle then because, like, do you know, like, the sound effect with a jump scare? Like, I'll be out in the garden with Brie at night and while well, she goes to the toilet and I'll hear, like, the jump scare noise and I'm like, amazing, great, I love it here. Um, but because the stuff that happens in the fall of House Usher is very particular to the family, like, I'm not thinking, oh, my God, there's going to be, like, demons crawling out of my flower beds because I'm not of the of the House of Usher, so they wouldn't be crawling out of my flower beds, you know? What's my horror threshold? Um, so I mm, probably like Saw, and I used to love Saw back in the day, but now that I have health anxiety, um, it's too, it, like it triggers me because of the, yeah, no. I have um, a very visceral memory of watching, I don't know which movie it is, but the one where like she gets a rib cage ripped open and just the thought of watching that now with medical anxiety like is a big no-no for me. Um, but I have, my response to fear is that it's a challenge, not a warning, which, um, may not be the most sensible thing, but that's why I do stuff like climb skyscrapers and like, adrenaline, things like that. Uh, so I would never say never, but I wouldn't watch stuff on my own that was super scary. I watched the, is it the Evil Dead? I watched the trailer for the new Evil Dead and I was like, I just don't think I can, I don't think I can do that right now. Was it the Evil Dead? Yes, it was. And I was like, I, I just don't think I can right now. Also, Curtis doesn't watch horror. He doesn't like horror. And I used to love horror. So from being with Curtis for eight years and not really watching horror, I'm a lot de more desensitized. But I will always watch horror shows over movies, I think. I don't know why. It's just I wouldn't even think about... I, I, I wouldn't not watch a, a horror show. Like, I would not watch a Mike Flanagan show sure, because it's scary um yes kind of the gory they didn't bother me I think I have a thing where like I know it's not real and like when it's for the sake of horror like that it doesn't bother me because it's not sad you know but it's graphic and it's gory but it's weird because like I wouldn't watch Saw because of the gore but there was quite a lot of gore in the the fall of House Usher because, like I said, it's very Final Destination-y. Um, and that is, that doesn't, it, it didn't bother me that much. There was some eye stuff, though, including cat eye stuff. That wasn't fun. Didn't enjoy that. But that's just one episode. There's one episode called Black Cat, which has all the cat stuff in. Um, and, and that's it for the cat stuff. love horror always struggling to find movies to actually scare me haven't cr come across a book that was able to yet i feel that i would say that the house on needless street is very unsettling and will make you feel uncomfortable the entire time that you're reading it but it wasn't was it scary i mean it made me feel very disturbed so potentially but not like scary scary you know good morning miss aaron how you doing yeah yeah, I can't even watch medical dramas. Like, they super freak me out. Like, Curtis has been watching The Good Doctor. And I put my headphones on and read. And it's annoying because, like, I want to know the plot. So he fills me in on all of the plot between, you know, like, all, like who's which of the day, doctors are dating and, like, what disasters have happened and who's died. But I can't watch it because of the medical stuff. Like, it makes my, um, my nail bed tingle. Right. We'll start sprinting in a minute. So I suppose we should get a roll going. If you guys are unfamiliar with dice sprints, the rules are always in the description box. And I know you guys who are familiar have heard this a thousand times. But I'm going to roll two six-sided dice. Each dot represents five minutes. That is how long the sprint will run for. And if we roll a double in any sprint, that is um, not the first one. And not the first one that you see when you join. You have to switch books. That rule is just for fun. If you're only reading one book, you don't have to do it. But if you want, the, if you want to put it on chaos mode, those are like the rules, you know? Not bad for a start in sprint. We have 35 minutes. 
I'm wondering because Wildlands, like obviously, like I'm fully not intending to finish this book today. This was just I wanted to do an extra roll, knowing that the book would be my first read of November as opposed to my last read of October. But this is actually a super fast read. I'm gonna be here for seven hours ish. I'm wrapping up between four and five PM UK, wherever the dice kind of lands within that. Um, so I'm wondering how much of this I'm actually gonna get read, because that's a long time for a book that's a quick read. So we'll see how it goes. But our first sprint is about to begin, and I'll see you all in 35 minutes.
Hello. I feel like I need to adjust this a little bit in a sec. How do you do in that sprint? I feel like I I adjusted my tripod for where it should be if I have correct posture, but as we can see, I am slouching. So that's a smidge better. <laughs> um, 86 is getting ready for work. Oh no, I hope you have a nice day though. No, I am not. That is you. 25 pages of malice by John Quinn. 30 had lunch. Uh, Queen Gambit 60% have screen moves on the background noise. I am gonna actually rem you reminded me to pause my background noise which is I'm doing cozy which is nook ambience today which is very nice uh 64 done with grimrose girls 62 36 percent uh finished the battle drum nice did you like it joined halfway through started reading for uni uh 22 37 Oh, we're jumping seven percent. Beans on toast. I also had my breakfast in that sprint. I had porridge or oh, oatmeal. For my Americans out there, is porridge and oatmeal the same? I feel like it is. For some reason, in my head, oatmeal is smoother, more like what we would call ready break. But I'm pretty sure that oatmeal is like the same as porridge. Now we're gonna have a debate in the comments. I feel. Oh well, could it? I was gonna say it could be worse. Could it? I don't know, Sophie. 93% of the way through Uncle Montague's Tales of Terror. Just have the bonus stories to go. Nice. 34 pages of The Hateless by Jennifer Brown. Um, I read, I should probably tell you what I did. I did go and eat porridge throughout the middle of that sprint. So um, I didn't read the most, but I still made it to 27, page 27 in my book, which ain't bad for a 35 minute sprint plus breakfast. Why can I not remember the end of this? I love that book as well. I'm trying to think where book one ends. I feel like book two opens the world up a lot and now I can't remember where it ends. Uh, which book is the Wildlands in the series? Wildlands is book two. It's the one I've already read this one as well. So this one's a reread for me. Oatmeal oh, is much smaller bits. Okay, fair. So the the people in the US eat porridge? Or do they only eat oatmeal? I discovered when we were in Italy, like people in the US don't know what flapjack is. Like it's something completely different. And they don't have a replacement for flapjack. Like we need to rectify this. They don't understand the beauty of flapjack. 30 pages of Cackle by Rachel Harrison, had a cup of tea. Oh, I'll be having a cup of tea this afternoon. It is cozy vibes only for me today. Um, Curtis is going to be going to Tesco soon because we don't have, we've run out of oat milk and also don't have anything in for lunch. So I've asked him to get me soup and crusty bread. I'm getting a crusty white blo bloomer and I'm so excited. Oatmeal, but then there are grits. I think oatmeal is more like ready break for us. Like it's smoother and it's wetter because when I have my porridge, like it's thick. Porridge is like it's oatmeal, but it's like thicker. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I did. How, how do we not know what porridge is? Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. That was I. Yeah. I remember now, that was good. See, see, flapjacks aren't pancakes. Flapjacks are, right, I need to put a recipe for flapjack in my Discord and have the Americans make it because it is so good. So it's like, it's it's oats, syrup, and butter. And you like mix them all together and you bake them. And then it's like an oat bar and it's so good. No, overnight oats are cold. I think oatmeal is the, text the texture. 
Let me look. Having oatmeal cold makes me feel kind of weird. Oatmeal is a type of porridge. Although all oatmeal is considered porridge, the term porridge does not always refer to oatmeal. Um, oatmeal is always made, oh, so it's rolled oats, okay. I think I have, is it steel cut oats that I have? Oh no, it's also rolled oats apparently. Yeah, it's the type of oat. This is true. I used to have to eat um, porridge in, in the morning when I was a kid with sugar on. It was a hefty bowl as well. Like it was like a rock kid in your stomach. Um, oatmeal is thick because of the oats, but grits are super small. It's just the name grits makes me feel a bit like texturally. I don't want to eat grits because this, the thought of eating something called grits is not doing much for my palate. Flapjack is elite. Um, hi, thank you for popping in. Ooh, rice porridge. Is rice porridge rice pudding? You know, this is a whole different question because I love rice pudding. And rice pudding, I prefer cold to hot because I feel like it's too creamy hot. Now I need to Google that. Yes, rice porridge and rice pudding are the same, which is interesting because I would consider rice pudding to be a dessert, not a breakfast food. So that's wild. Oatmeal with steel cut oats and quick oats as well. There's just a lot of oat. I've only just started having oat milk in my porridge because I was wondering if double oat in it would be too much. <laughs> but I can confirm it's not. Rice pudding is elite. Like, oh my God. One of my good childhood memories is just cracking open a tin of rice pudding, you know? Normally my childhood memories are associated with tin food and not fun. But <laughs> rice pudding is the one. We got to get to the bottom of life's mysteries. <laughs> I add, oh, cocoa's a good shout actually. Maybe I should try that because I add a spoonful of Nutella. Because I need it, I can't eat it if it's like got no sugar on it at all. But I don't like eating just sugar. Like I, I would rather have add something sweet, which is why I have Nutella, instead of just sprinkling sugar on. Because I feel like you need to add a lot of sugar to make it actually taste sweet, whereas just one spoonful of Nutella does the job. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. I, I will eat rice pudding just cold, straight out of the tin. Leftover rice with milk and a scoop of jam. I've had rice pudding homemade once before. Um, and I would like to actually make it again. But I, yeah, I can't confirm how it was made because it was just one time. But it ended up being really thick. So it wasn't like where it's tinned, where it's like quite loose. It was like, it's like when your mum makes porridge and it's like a rock <laughs> rice pudding. Porridge is dinner, rice pudding is dessert. Oh, oh, this is wild to me. I only have only ever had it sweet. Rice-based porridge is very common. Definitely not the same as rice pudding. Rice pudding is thicker. Okay. Um, a pancakes, pancakes for you in England. We have pancakes, but there's different types of pancakes. So I wouldn't call... Like we have crepes, which are French ones. They're like our standard pancake. Um, but I make, if I make pancakes, I make American pan make pancakes. But yeah, pancakes are just pancakes or crepes, depending on what type they are. And waffles are waffles. I think. 
assuming that we think that a waffle is the same thing. <laughs> oh, this is a preference though, because I just don't, I don't, I don't, I, I wouldn't eat porridge savory. Like I'd sweeten it. Um, okay, that's 10 minutes of porridge talk. So let's roll. And during the next sprint, I will think of a, another equally deep topic to talk about in the next 10 minutes. We need a cooking with Becca show. I actually wanted to do cooking bits of like my vlogs and stuff. Not Oh, it's a double. Which is fine because I have stuff that I can do and an audio book. But it is a double three, which is 30 minutes. Um, I don't like my kitchen. And I realised the other day that I keep saying I've got no counter space. And it's because when we moved in, we have a kitchen island, but it's pushed to the side because you can move it. It's pushed to the side. So I just made candles on there. And it was last week that I realised the reason I have no counter space is because I'm supposed to have an island in the middle of my room, which I'm not using. And if I got the island out then I could do cooking set, like bits that actually looked good because there would be lighting and like space. Um, but then I would have to move the um, the candle stuff and I have nowhere to put them. Thanks. A Belgian waffle is like a, like a roundish one, I guess, and they're quite thick. Um, but all waffles are waffles. They're just different shapes. Like there'll be different batters and stuff like pancakes are. But um they're all waffles, I think. Okay. Let me change this. Okay. Oh, I love a stroop waffle. They're amazing. But they're still waffles. The waffle is the shape of the waffle, not the ingredients. Like, they're different types of waffle, but they're all still waffles. Oh, God. Right, y'all are debating in the comments now, so I'm just going to leave you to it, and I'm going to switch to my audiobook and sort out my prompt jar for November. <laughs>
Hello, how did you do in that sprint? I, what did I do? I listened to my audiobook and listened to Slayers still. I've got like two hours left on it now. I think I don't, I'm probably not going to finish it today, but that's fine. Uh, how much is left? Two hours and 17 minutes. And I made my pot of prompts for November. So that's sorted, ready for me starting my first vlog tomorrow. And I took a picture of this so that I can post the roll on Patreon, as I have been doing all month. And then I watched a bit of a YouTube video. Good night, thank you for joining. 7%, oops. Join late, reading my 31st book of the month, Mr. Magic. That's very impressive, Emma. 40, coffee and booktube, nice. Started saw a catcher until my kitten decided to try and fight the book. Yikes. Oh no, I'm sorry, Ali. Working on listening to my QA. Nice. Oh, Subway. That sounds good. Curtis has just told me that he's going out now to get my soup. Drop the baby girl off for school and on my way to work. I hope you have a nice day at work, my lovely. Dead leg. 50 ish pages left of audition. Nice. I uh, got to page 20 of the Count of Monte Cristo. Started a task, complete another chapter. Decided to try and do some NaNoWriMo prep. I want to do Nano one year, but I know I never will because I am not that prepared a person. Hey, we have another book finished. Do not forget to fill in the form with your finished books saying that I haven't done any of mine yet so I have 13 12 to input <laughs> but if you want to contribute to the stats I actually haven't looked at them at all should I look let's look let's see I haven't been reminding people to fill it in so I don't think it's going to be accurate but um, I'm in the wrong place. I should be in sheets. There's been 2,587 submissions though. Uh, so, where is my graph? We've read 2,587 books, which is a total of 875,278 pages. But that is without, for a start, my 5,000 pages that I've read. And I imagine a lot of you guys, yeah, have not submitted. It's because I've been, like, so low-key this um, year. I, like, I, I said in the announcement there would be a form. As I promised, I put the form in the description box on the 1st of October. I also posted it to Twitter and pinned it on the thread. And I put it in the Discord. So, yes, there is a form. <laughs> um, but I know a lot of people will have forgotten because I haven't been like, don't forget to fill in the form. And last year I did, like, weekly stats of, like, this is the most landed upon space. Which, um, should we see what the, the most landed upon space is? Um, everyone's like, yes, I will do the form tonight. <laughs> Sorry guys, bringing that on your last minute. I'll leave it probably till at least Friday before I start looking at responses anyway. Um, okay. What's the most landed upon space? It's, yeah, it's got to be chance 171 times. Community shelf 153. Aside from that, oh, we're really evenly spaced. Dice roll roulette's got 101. Mood reads got 115. That's a lot of people rolling 12 as the first roll. Is it really mood read? Yeah, the further around the board, there's a lot less because obviously some people don't make it all the way around. 85 for Toffee Apple, that's quite popular. Dice Roll, Roulette and Mood Read seem to be the ones the most landed on spaces. Oh my days, your first Christmas novel already? That's blasphemy. Nah, you do you. I'm starting my Christmas shopping soon. It's really annoying because I've made a list of things. And now, because I've just done a candle restock, I'm like, oh, I should buy a bunch of Christmas presents. But I know Black Friday is coming up. 
where everything's going to be reduced. Are you going? Are you just getting lunch? No. Okay. Cheese. Philly. Philly. If you want Philly. Eggs, yeah. We've got bacon still. Oat milk. Soup. Toasty stuff. Cool. I trust you. Pepsi, yes, thank you. Landed on none of those. Uh, hit chance three times. I hit it twice, two different ones. One on the bottom near the, um, in the colour prompt, and then one at the top near the reds. Uh, the only purpose of the form is to track what books you read for what prompts so that we can see how many pages and books were read and how, which prompts were landed on the most, essentially. I do also have, I don't know if I've done it for this one. Let's see if I can figure out how to do it. Because last year I had something that told me what the most read book was. Um, but I need to find out the formula so I can put it into this one. Haha. -ha. See if I can just paste this into the 2023 one, see what happens. So the most read book is the XX. I literally just pasted it in with 14 times read. The what what is that one supposed to be? These need changing because one of them isn't, it was supposed to give me the person who's read the most books, which it's not doing, and the most common space is Chance with 173. So yeah, the XX is our most read book of this year. For 2022, it was Babel with 25, but we have a lot more data than last year because, like I said, I wasn't telling anyone to fill in the form. Wow. Yeah, that is that is laziness. You could just skip those ones and not put them in. Uh, landed twice on Mood Read and twice on Dice Roll Roulette. I haven't landed on Mood Read and I've only just landed on Dice Roll Roulette. I actually haven't landed on any of the corner or train stations until this week where I landed on Go on Wednesday. And I DNF'd the book for that and then I've landed my last prompt before this one was are we out of the woods yet which was my first train station and then I landed on dice roll roulette oh I hate when that happens they automatically <laughs> do you not go <laughs> they automatically just don't go onto my priority pilot if by the time they've been sent the date's already passed like that's not my problem um yeah, this is him doing his normal weekly shop. So, like, I pay for the HelloFresh and he pays for all of our, like, lunch food and stuff. So, and, like, bread and... Um, does he have crusty bread in his list? I think he does. Um, the bread and the, like, milk and that kind of thing he pays for. So, I, I trust him with this shop because it's just the same stuff over and over again. But I do need to text him and tell him to get bagels. Because we're out of bagels. well oh you landed on most of them i'm jealous good morning gorgeous i was thinking about you earlier uh landing on a way out with the woods maybe three times there is such a thing as rolling patterns so it is possible to land on the same things over and over again if you're stuck in a rolling pattern the most um common roll with two six-sided dice is seven so it's very common to roll sevens and the most landed upon square property space on a monopoly board is trafalgar square which in this instance would correlate with the broken mirror prompt and the most landed on train station is marylebone which is in this instance are we out of the woods yet so yeah there are spaces that you are generally most likely to land on i know a lot about Mon i know a lot about monopoly I don't know what them thoughts are. I don't want to know what them thoughts are if you're winky facing at me. 
Okay. Next roll. I'm going back to read him regardless. Um, I think. Yeah, although I have a... <laughs> you should see how many Monopoly sets I've got. I've got a lot. Um, I have a voice note to listen to. And then I'm going to go back to reading. Okay, back to 35 minutes as we've rolled a seven. See, told you, seven's the most common number rolled. And this one is obviously not a double because it is an odd number. So, I wonder if I... Yeah, I can see you guys filling things in because the number, I can see the number ticking up on the spreadsheet because I've got it open. We're on 2,612 books registered at the minute. I should do mine. Maybe if we roll another double, I'll do it. Um, Because, like I said, I want to go back to reading. Have a nice day, my love. Um, yeah, well, that's why I created the TBR game. Otherwise, how would I have thought to do it if I didn't already love Monopoly? I'm a big Monopoly fan. Um, okay, I'll see you all in 35 minutes. Happy reading.
Hello. How'd you do? I spent five minutes thinking about it in that one, and then I read 27 pages, I think. Um... Sorry, guys. I spend my um, sprints obviously reading, but then I miss I miss all of the updates. I'm actually trying to wean myself off my phone a bit and not have it near me when I'm actually reading um, to increase my focus, and it actually helps. To be fair, uh, I'm not watching American Horror Story season twelve. I haven't watched it since season four. Um, I should start again, but just skip season four because I got bored halfway through. But every time I try and watch it, I try and rewatch it from the beginning, and obviously I lose steam. I only ever make it through season one, so I should just—I just need to pick it up at five. Uh, yeah, you brought me a fairy loot box. Yes. Uh, eight percent of glow. Getting invested in Prior of the Orange Tree. Filled in the form, went to make lunch. Nice, nice, nice. Hello, went for a morning walk with a friend. Oh no, not work. Oh well, hopefully you'll get to reading sometime soon. 50 pages in my dreams, I hold a knife, 150 to go. Um, any thoughts on the Afterlight news? Yes, I think I'm gonna cancel my subscription. <laughs> um, I just don't need I, like the, the reason why I signed up to Afterlight is because I wanted more contemporary romance um, which I mean is a valid reason to sign up to a subscription box and then the the, re the fact that it was quarterly was perfect because I don't need a romance book every month and then they changed it to bi-monthly and I was like mm, I'll stick with it and, and I just have too many romance books and also they're all hardback and I just don't need romance in hardback um, and I just yeah I, for £20 for like a small hardback of a book that I would rather have in paperback and then all of their picks I'm just not interested in right now so like the one I'm salty about the one that I was sent last month just because it's a football romance and I'm like I, just, I don't want a football romance so I've actually skipped for the first time because I forgot that you could do that people in my discord um, they're changing they're going to book only but not changing the price and it's going to be monthly from now on. Um, so I skipped November's because I normally don't spoil myself for the books. And I was like, well, if I'm going to keep this subscription at any point, like I'm going to have to start skipping ones because I don't want them. So I, yeah, I'm going to keep it for a while and just spoil myself for every book coming up and skip a lot of them. I do know that they are changing the skip policy going into, because at the minute I think it's like you could skip up to 10 months you have to receive at least one book every 10 months for Illumicrate and I assume it's going to be it's something similar for um Afterlight uh but I did know that they were thinking about changing the skip policy so we'll see what that is but honestly I think I could do without it at this point I haven't read most of them most of them are sapphic which is fine it's just i don't really read a lot of sapphic romance so for a lot of them to be sapphic is quite a lot it's weird that they haven't in all of the time done like a male male romance up until this next one that's coming up um yeah it just eh. so <laughs> i think that i i will be cancelling eventually but for now i'm gonna roll with the skips because They've also done that thing where you only get early access to Afterlight stuff if you have an Afterlight subscription, whereas you used to get early access to everything providing you had a subscription. So I think Afterlight might be a cancel for me, unfortunately. Yeah, a lot of people just... Because I just don't read that much romance to need a monthly contemporary romance subscription if it was like generally like a romance subscription and it was a mix of contemporary and fantasy and stuff then i would potentially consider keeping it because i'd be getting more stuff that i was interested in 
but just solidly contemporary romance i don't read enough of that i just don't read enough contemporary romance to keep it um romance also as a genre is very subjective if you're getting stuff that you don't like like tropes that you don't like like i don't like age gap romances and i'm not saying that they have had any but like i just feel like it's so subjective and you'll get stuff that like you just really don't want you know i don't know if i'm making sense but if you understand so yeah i don't think i'll be keeping afterlife for much longer i'm glad that they are going to book only though because i kept saying like the only regular subscription that i pay for is afterlight that's like an actual box and i wish it was book only because i don't need the stuff in it i didn't like the stuff very much in afterlight a lot of the time especially recently um and i just don't have enough space for romances in hardback but i'm actually right now because I, I know i mentioned recently i'm going i'm not going off romance i think because i've been trying to fix my hormones having a different balance of hormones has affected how much i like romance like honestly sometimes reading smoke makes me cringe <laughs> it's like i really think it's because my hormones have changed because reading romance used to make me cringe and then i started really enjoying it at about the same time i came off the pill and now i'm back on the pill again romance ain't always doing it for me again so i'm actually more drawn towards the evernight subscription right now but i also have only read like two horrors this month this year and they were this month so i don't need a horror subscription either um but yeah um you should probably you could do blind date with a book then or there are like subscriptions out there that don't do special editions but like the the bonus of getting the special edition the the box is that you get the special edition i guess that's the point of the box um because otherwise i guess you could just go buy a book but there is one, there's like an indie one that reached out to me and I just forgot to reply because I'm really shit at replying to my emails where they do self-published um, books where you just get two indie books a month, I think. There's also this in general, like with romance being so subjective, there's like an amount of sex scenes that some people like, some people like it to be super explicit, some people like it to be really clean. Um, and I just feel like 12 romances a month when I know that because romance is so subjective and I'm really picky about romance at the minute because of potentially because of my hormones, but like I just don't need 12, 12 a year. I mean, this is this is valid because like I like I said, I have a different hormone level. No, I'm not as hormonal as I was, I would say, because my hormones are regulated a bit better which was the point but that's affected how much romance i like it's actually really annoying me because i have so many romance books now obviously it's like love romance and now i'm just not loving it as much that being said though i did just read you again and i really enjoyed that i gave it four stars so it very much depends on the romance <laughs> um, and but it's hard because like i have no idea what i like anymore right now because i'm feeling weird about romance stuff adult fantasy book only boxes you have the adult fairy loot um locked library has ya now because really what we needed was another ya fantasy book subscription box like i don't have enough of them the goldsboro one is a fantasy book only box with a little bit of sci-fi in the goldsboro science fiction and fantasy fellowship um i don't really know there'll be american ones probably but i don't really know them um that it i really like the locked library editions and stuff but they just didn't need to be a ya they didn't need to have ya like i just don't understand why there's so many ya <laughs> subscription boxes like i didn't need another one <laughs> especially because i signed up to lock library specifically because harper voyage is my favorite fantasy publisher i do feel like it's hard because a, a lot of times the audience for fantasy romance versus contemporary romance is different so you're not going to hit everybody because like some people don't want fantasy some people don't want contemporary but 12 is a lot and there are people out there who will love that because like romance readers truly do the most they read the most like they're out here reading 30 books a, a month 
so they would thrive with this subscription but um me me personally i, I don't read that much romance i i read maybe one romance i, I maybe read like 12 romances a year oh chris yeah i got adult only I will say in terms of special editions, the US doesn't have as many printing presses that do customizations as the UK, so the quality in general tends to be not as good, like I know some of them outsource to China, and you can tell, like my bookish box Fortuna Swan ones, it's not great quality. Um, that would be cool actually, a combo box for Afterlight and Aluma Crate. They seem to be like separating things more than bringing them together though, if I'm being honest. Oh, um, see, I really like the taste of Broken Bindings, like the, the books that they tend to market is the kind of fantasy I like, but I don't need reprinted old fantasy series. I want I want them to do a subscription like the Adult Fairy Loot, where they send me actual new fantasy books, because I'm like I'm like more likely to like those because that's the kind of adult fantasy I want why um adult fairy loot is not the kind of adult fantasy i'm typically looking for although i do like the adult fairy loot picks they're not like my fight like broken binding do stuff like john gwyn joe abercrombie and that kind of thing which is more what i want as opposed to like i'm trying to think what's been in an adult fairy loot recently that's like an, an author that i can actually say off the top of my head and i get, can't It'll probably get there because I feel like that's the direction they're going. It'll go the same way because Illumicrate started off as a quarterly box um, and then went to, I don't know if it went to bi-monthly before monthly. Broken Binding just do, as far as I'm aware, they just do reprinted old trilogies and stuff, um, which I don't want. I don't need old books in hardback. I think it's very hit and miss in general because at the end of the day somebody else is curating the box so it's never going to be exactly to my taste and they're all going to be hit and miss um i think fairy loot are very solid aesthetically like the, the items tend to be the best the additions tend to be the best i tend to like illumicrate's book picks better like for the actual illumicrate box better than i like fairy loot's picks for the actual books but i think that fairy loot's editions are nicer than illumicrate's um and their items are nicer and Afterlight, I liked a lot more when I started than I like now. Um, Locked Library, gorgeous editions, but I'm not loving the amount of Magpie books that they're putting in there. Especially that one that they had a couple of months ago that had like a two point something rating on Goodreads. And I was always worried about this with Locked Library, which is what I said when I first got it. Like my concern with Locked Library is that it's just a way for HarperCollins to push the books that they want to sell as opposed to any books that are actually good. And it seems like they did a lot of standout titles to start off with. And then they're not as standout as like the subscription continues. I, that sounds really good. I like the sound of this. I haven't heard of this box. Um, too many options. Like you have to think like this is a solution to fit the most amount of people. It's not a customized um, experience for everybody. And I do think that subscription boxes catch way too much heat because of entitled people that like want to complain because they can't have a book. And I'm like, you need to take it down a notch and go touch some grass. Like, why are you crying? Cause you didn't, you, you didn't get a special edition book, like priorities, please. Um, so yeah, I, I do feel like they get way too much heat and way too much criticism for very minor things that people want to cry about. Um, and like at the end of the day, like if something's not for me, it's not for me. I'm not going to complain to them about them making after like monthly. Like it makes sense. They have a large subscriber base. If they make it monthly, then you can, they make so much more money. They make three times as much money as it was when it was quarterly. Like it's a no brainer. But what I don't have to do is then pay for it, which I won't. That was, I feel like I always have like a minor subscription box run like it once every like three months. I also just haven't been buying special editions recently. I kind of have reached my limit where there's a lot that I just don't want because I just, it's just too much. And when things become too much, it takes the joy out of it for me. Um, 
that's five, so 25 minutes. I feel like I should maybe eat. Mm, should I? Okay. Curtis was stood here, so I feel like, let's see, do you want food? No. Yeah, like, I, I just can't cook, like, the, the point of exclusivity and special editions is that they're special and exclusive. If everybody has them, they're not special and exclusive. You missed out, not my problem. Like some people would complain because they do the sales in the daytime and it's like, yes, when they're at work, like they're not gonna come at the middle of the night and launch a sale for you because you were at work when they're not at work, you know? Like it's not, I don't know people just ask for far too much like accept things aren't for you and move on please because it ain't that deep it truly truly is not that deep um i have not i have not and i will not i don't know what it is but i don't think i want to um i don't like her as a person very much um although i do like her books and i'm also not a fan i would say like i haven't read a shadow hunters book in a long time but I'm really intrigued about Swordcatcher because I do really like her books, but not enough to go out of my way and like get anything additional from her. No. Um, okay, rant aside, I'll try and come back less ranty and I'll see you all in 25 minutes.
Hello. I mainly had lunch in that sprint, so I didn't read very much, but I'm now on page 61. With almost four hours to go with sprints, depending on how the rolls fall. How'd you do? Congratulations on finishing your TBR, Marley. 25 pages on lunch for Kim. I had soup and crusty bread for lunch. It was very good. Ooh, 20 minute nap and now have pizza. Delicious. Halfway through. Nice. Walk Toto. Good, good. See if Curtis will do the dog walk today because it's a rainy day, so I don't want to. Ow! Stabbed myself on my ring. Death Note Volume 1. Nice. 4% more of glow. Dropped Holly off at school. Ate a breakfast bagel. Delicious. Hello. 10 pages of slew foot. Love Island, Australia. We support it. I'm not a Love Island girl, at least to be fair. It's too much commitment. Finished my book and my goal of four books this month. Love that. I'm glad that the sprints help and you get through your uni work, Alma. 5% left. You'll have that done in no time. Oh no. Listen to some chapters of Icebreaker. Planning on switching to Frankenstein for the next round. Finished and posted a reel updating my Instagram stories. Now about to finish updating my reading journal. Sounds good. I'm re-watching Scream at the minute because I've only I've seen Scream 1 to 3 and I want to watch the newer ones. Um, so I'm currently re-watching the old ones to work up to that point. So we watched um, the first one on, was it Friday maybe? And tonight we're watching Scream 2. 10% left of One Dark Window. Are you enjoying it? I've heard good things about that. 42 minutes left of my audio. Very ready to finish it so I can get back to my other book. Fair. 33 pages left in my book and then I should edit my video. Finish my book. Spent some time scrolling on social media. Nice. I'm excited to pull my prompt for my subscription box challenge next month, but which is ironic considering we were talking about subscription boxes. Um, but I don't know what I'm reading because I'm going to be reading Wildlands in the background. I don't know what my prominent book is going to be. New ones are so good, but so are the old ones. That's a great time. I did a watch through of all the Final Destination movies this year. Oof. Don't know if I could watch Final Destination anymore because of my anxiety because... I still feel weird driving behind trucks that have like logs or like fence posts on the back. We'll be getting a number of books entered on the book tracker for Spook Oplathon. Haven't we just been talking about that? Or do you want like an update like since we last spoke about it? 89 pages of my fourth wing reread. That's coming. I can read that technically for my subscription box challenge, providing it fits the fulfills the prompt of the week. Um, because I have ordered, like that's a workaround that we can go with because I have ordered the fairy loot ones. Um, I actually ordered them as a gift for my friend. But I, because I'm just going to have the Waterstones ones, like I don't need multiple ones, but they are a subscription box book. So... I could read that. I mean, I'm not that bothered if I don't read it this month, but that is a possibility. Oh, God, I'm not a Marvel girly. Like, superheroes are not for me. I just think they're so vanilla. And I feel like there's so much depth. Like, I prefer DC to Marvel because there's more gray morality in DC. Um, but yeah, superhero stories for me are, like, very vanilla in general. And, like, they just haven't done with DC what they did with Marvel. If there was, like, a DC cinematic universe that was expansive, as not as expansive as Marvel, I could probably get behind it. Uh, finish my five chapters. One more part of this module, which hasn't a lot. So now I get fun tasks, like, risk assessments. Oh, I love that. 
literally. <laughs> I will still get on a roller coaster though, and I'm sure there's a roller coaster one. Ordered plain chicken, but they gave me spicy. I mean, that would not be a bad thing for me. But you ordered plain, so I assume you want plain. That's unfortunate. I really wish I could watch Saw because I really did used to like Saw. Um, and I think I watched up to maybe four, but I just, I could not, not anymore. Mm -mm. I was, I get triggered by weird stuff now. Gideon the Ninth was fucking me up when I was reading it because of how they actually, they're necromancers, but they actually use blood. Like very early on in the book, like Harrow just stabs herself in the cheek to get blood and they're all like gross and scabby because they're constantly like drawing blood from themselves. And like sometimes I was just like, can't do this. Um, but I actually really like Gideon. What was it as well that did it for me? I feel like something else I've read as well has got me on something like that. Oh, okay, cool. Aside from Suicide Squad, they've done a terrible job with their attempts at cinematic universe. That is very true. Oh yeah, Curtis already has flight anxiety, so that would be a big no-no. I don't remember the play specifically though. Nah, you didn't. I feel like you could say that for most horror though. Like a lot of it just truly isn't that deep. <laughs> Especially like slasher ones and final destinations. They're very like surface level fun. Fly for a living, but the truck is the one that we just know out of. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. That's very fair. The first and last one involved a plane. I really don't remember. Oh, I love them. I love all of them. Gideon gives me big Sephiro energy. And y'all know I love Sephiro, but I think Harrow is my favourite. I really love Harrow. The audio book definitely helps. I don't know if you did do the audio clear, but um, the performance, the audio performance is really good. I'm actually really excited to read Harrow and I'm upset because I'm doing the subscription challenge. I can't read Harrow next month. But if this goes well, then I might do something sequel related in December. Although I don't like to pen myself into challenges or readathons for December, aside from loosely following along with clear or shit, just because December for me is just like wrapping shit up before the end of the year. So it just needs to be whatever needs to be read in that month. Oh no, I didn't know there was a laser eye surgery one and that makes me hit everything because I almost had laser eye surgery. Oh no, everything's going wrong. It's the final destination energy. Damn. Now my eyes feel weird. Mm. I mean, to be fair, the sequel should be better than the first. In reality, it doesn't always work out like that, but I do like it when the sequels are better. Because I keep like reading series that have a really strong start, and then for the sequel, they either just kind of maintain that energy or they're worse, and I'm like, can we not do this, please? Need to try and get some more series done because check in my ongoing series starts was an eye opener. I haven't done too bad um, in a lot of ways because I'm on. I wanted to have two sequels read for every series that I started this year and that hasn't quite worked out. But I'm on. I've started 21 new series, but I've read 36 sequels. So it's not terrible. Um but it could be better. I'm actually being better at DNF in series now and not just leaving them to languish on my spreadsheet forever. Like there's loads here. Like I'm not continuing with Emily Wilde. I'm not continuing with the Unearthed series by Amy Kaufman, the Shadow and Crown series by SM Gaither. I won't be reading a sequel to Mask of Mirrors. Um, I DNF the Unspoken Name series, the Blood Grace series. So like I'm being very good at just going, nope. I've also finally DNF Children of the Whales. So even though I've started quite a few, I'm not like going, oh, I'll try book two. I'm just like, I don't want to read book two. Oh, I remember tanning beds, yes. Uh, 
Um, how do you count that in those several series of series? That hurts my brain to think about, Amma. Hey. Um, okay, next sprint. I might move over to the couch for this one. I'm bored of sitting on this chair. We are back to seven, which is 35 minutes. This will be a reading sprint for me. Um, so hopefully I'll get, cause I'm doing that thing where like, I know I don't have to read today. So I'm just wandering around and it's like, okay, but I'm literally just wasting time. Just read the damn book. <laughs> but, um, I will see y'all in 35 minutes.
Hello. How do you do? Um, I, well, I think 37 pages. I'm on 98 now, which is pretty good progress. Oof, this is a big ouch. It's very cold today. I've ordered some winter leggings. I'm looking for a new company to order leggings from. Um, like everyday leggings, not gym leggings. So I've ordered some winter ones from somewhere and I'm very excited for them to arrive to see how they are. Good morning. Oh, you're so close to finishing. Hello, Ocean. 42, 40, oh, 42 left. Uh, 50, watch YouTube. 50, hey, look at you go. Uh, fell in Highland of Rabbit Hole after finding out they're doing a reboot. Okay. There goes the lid off my bottle. Jealous about the fries. <clears throat> On cold days like this, all I want to do is eat. I'm eating really stodgy, like warm food as well. I have porridge for breakfast, soup for lunch, and it's pasta for dinner. So, like, I'm eating the winter foods. 24, 12, carry eight, had lunch. Nice, nice. Seven left. One more sprint should indeed do it. 30 pages of In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife. Curtis, when he was hungover the other day, made me go, was it Sunday night? Yeah, Sunday night, he made me go and get in Ben and Jerry's at like 8pm. I was like, wow, I love this for me. Hello, I'm going to be sprinting until sometime between 4 and 5 uh, UK time. So there is another, at least another two hours, slightly more than that probably. Um, first snow of the season, making chicken pot pie. That sounds amazing. Cuddles with the kitten and 40 minutes left of my audio. Good. Hello, I am well. One hour and 28 of regular society of witches. Nice. Uh, so in my first ever cut, now that I've done some alterations to the pattern, it's looking really good. I finished the whole outer layer and it fits nicely now, just the lining to alter. I love that for you. I would love to do stuff like that, but um, I tried to use a sewing machine once and it went horribly wrong. Um, so I kind of just gave it up as a bad job because, damn, was that difficult. I do have a single sewing machine as well. I just need to figure out how to use it. And just because fabric's so expensive, it's like not something I want to fuck up, you know? Also, I feel like it's very frustrating if you go wrong and I just can't. Like, I'm the kind of person who, if I went so dramatically wrong that it would take me hours to fix it, then I would just put it in a cupboard and pretend it never happened and, and cry about it. It's supposed to be spring here, but it's six degrees. Oof. Finished Mammoth Book of Body Horror. Oh, that sounds horrible. 76% of the way through Girl of Nightmares. Oh, the sequel to Anna Dressed in Blood. I've heard of that one. Uh, oh, Cory. That sounds good. Literally, beige food is the best. I could demolish sausage rolls right now. Just a big plate of sausage rolls. Um... It is very intimidating. But it's just, it's the, it's the threading and stuff as well. Like, I don't really know how the sewing machine works. I do still have it because um, it was my, well, it was actually my great aunt Madge who had it. She was a seamstress and then it got passed on to my dad. But obviously my mum used it, not my dad. Um, and now I've got it. But I, I don't know how to use it. It will have been expensive at the time because it's a singer, so it's like a good one. I hope to see you soon, Jesse. But if not, thank you for joining us. 20 pages of Restless Slumber. Oh, a vegan carbonara. That's not that's what I meant to click on. 
<laughs> I am. Um, I'm having chicken and bacon or something. I think. I can't remember what type of pasta it is. This round has done me so dirty. I've had 10 double rolls, but I'm proud to say only one book left. You've done very, very well. I know, but like, I, I'm, I'm one of those people who I'm drawn towards things that I'm naturally good at. Um, I'm also drawn to like things with, like I like cross stitches because they have charts and stuff and they're really easy to follow. Sewing machines, I made, how many stockings did I make? Eight Christmas stockings one year. Fucking hell, it was horrible. And I just, yeah, it was just a lot, you know, it was just a lot. And <laughs> I haven't gone back since. Used to be very impatient with sewing and always wanted my projects to be done in a day, but I've recently changed my expectations. And since then I'm loving sewing with an audio book on. I need to know what to make is the things. So, like I don't want to make something for the sake of making it. Because, like, I very much learn, like, I can't do things without a point. Like, I understand that the best way to learn to sew is to get a scrap piece of fabric and just start. But I can't learn to sew for the sake of learning to sew. It would have to be for a reason. It would have to be because I wanted to make something in particular. Um, so, like, I think when our bedroom's done, which hopefully we'll have a quote for the plastering soon, it has been months, um we're gonna have we've got a window seat and I want to make a cushion for it obviously because it'll be the size of our window seat it would have to be a handmade cushion so like I want to make when I have to make the cover for that then maybe I'll get the sewing machine out and I feel like once it's something when I started like it can't stop or I won't be able to stop but I will like obviously get a scrap piece of fabric and like practice on it but I know I'm not going to do that unless I actually have a reason to get out my um my sewing machine It's just because of how many things it has to loop through and I'm like, I don't understand how. This is fair. I would never use a cloth napkin, I don't think. That's like fancy tableware and I don't have guests ever. Not fancy tableware guests anyway. <laughs> uh, I got a sewing machine for my birthday in 2020 and I still haven't touched it. Oh no. Quilting looks cool. I would like to do that. I think that would be really fun. Um, that's the reason why I wanted to learn to sew because I wanted to quilt. Uh, but yeah, it, it would be a very useful skill to have. And also would say, oh, care. Okay, I've got hundreds. I've got, I've got like all, all of the, this, this shelf here and the one below is full of book sleeves. I truly do not need any more. Hand sewed a toy mouse to my cat that he's hidden somewhere, but I've never got along with sewing machines. Like, yeah, I can hand sew. Um, I do all of like my clothing repairs. I hand sew those. I sew up Bree's toys so she can rip them open again. Um, also, I feel like getting, getting the sewing machine out is like a lot of effort for like a small thing. And it would have to be something like I'm at the minute I'm struggling to get a jigsaw out because I don't feel like I have the hours to commit to it. But I feel like it's an afternoon activity. Like I'm going to spend the entire afternoon doing this. Um, but yeah, so I'm not getting the sewing machine out, am I? I know that there's lots of classes for it. It's not the the it's not the learning how to sew that's a problem. It's me not being actually willing to actually do it. Like you know. Grandma taught me to sew and crochet. My stepmom taught me how to knit and my great aunt taught me how to crochet. I've been out to since I was about 12. Me too. My mum wasn't a big sewer. So she did teach me basically how to use the sewing machine. But at that point, like, it was a while ago now. And I just wasn't. I was getting so frustrated with it. I was like doing it for days and I was raging. So uh, um, yeah, that didn't. And she didn't know anything advanced. She knew like the bare basics. She taught me how to hand sew. Um, she actually didn't teach me how to knit. I had a friend who taught me how to knit. But she did try and teach me how to crochet. But I'm one of those people who I can't knit and crochet. Like knitting is the one that I learned first. So crocheting just confuses me. Um, some gorgeous but easy beginner patterns out there. I just don't want it to turn into one of those things that I have. Like I do this all the time with things like cross stitches where I'll... 
which and then just throw it in a cupboard. <laughs> it's like I'll get addicted to the making of things, so I'll end up with 45 quilts that I don't want and that's expensive. That's why I stopped knitting so much. Because I was knitting through, like I was making a blanket a week and I was like, I don't need this, this is expensive. Okay. Let us roll. It is a double. It's a double. And it's an eight. And I'm not mad about it actually because I was really thinking about going for a nap. So I might go get on the couch in the living room and have like half an hour nap. I haven't been sleeping very well because Bree's had, we talked about this on Saturday, she's had the spicy diarrhea. Which is clearing up now, but the problem is, is that she's had a couple of accidents on the kitchen floor overnight because she's had the spicy diarrhea. Therefore, I no longer trust her. So on the, I slept with her in my bed on Saturday night, so she needed the toilet I could hear. So she kicked me all night, and then she had me crawling onto my chest at half six, and woke me up. And then on Sunday night, I got up at three in the morning to let her out to make sure that she didn't need the toilet and then I got up again at seven once again to let her out to make sure she didn't need the toilet and then last night I had to take her for a walk at 11 30 because she wouldn't go to the toilet in the garden so I had to walk her so that she would go um so like accumulation of those three nights means that I'm like tired <laughs> I think I'm gonna nap um I don't even think I'm going to listen to an audiobook, but I am going to set an alarm on my phone to make sure I actually get up and come back. I probably won't fall asleep. Um, but if I'm not back, it's because I'm asleep. And I'll tell Curtis actually to wake me up as well. So <laughs> we're going to start the sprint. I'll see you all in 40 minutes.
Hello, how did you do? I did indeed nap in that sprint. And Brie came and napped with me, so we slept like this. And she was not happy that I had to get up and come back. I actually did it like really sleep. I just lay down and was warm for 40 minutes. I'm so cold. I don't want to get changed into something warmer, but I am struggling. We're on 2,809 books logged for Bookopoly now. Did the dishes and read pages. I know she was cute, wasn't she? She kept coming and like I was facing the back of the couch and she kept coming, like getting up on the edge of the couch, looking at my face and being like, what are you doing? So then I took a cushion out from the back and was like, do you want to get in? And she just like snuggled straight out. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love when this happens. Normally it's a sign that I'm procrastinating something else if I'm actually doing the tasks like this. Started two twisted crowns, nice. Nearly halfway through, love that for you. I might make a cup of tea in the next one to warm me up. Disney Dreamlight and grinding to finish the star path. <sighs> um, currently reading Red Rising. Absolutely loving it. Didn't think I would like it this much. I am glad. That is what I always love to hear. I want to know that y'all are loving Red Rising. Uh, dyeing my hair. I forgot sprints were happening. Oh no, well, we're still here for at least another, I want to say about an hour and a half. So I think it'll end up being like two sprints. We'll see. More time than I needed to decide on the second book. Managed to read about 25 pages of a magic steep to poison. Nice. Nachos for lunch. 20-ish pages. Finished Thorn Hedge. Oof. 5 a.m. Damn. Well, at least you made it to us eventually. I mean, I would go dressed as you are because it's Halloween. So, like, anything goes. Read it, Emily Wilde. A hundred pages left of malice. Love that for you. Mmm. Nachos. Melted cheese. Melted cheese. Ooh, I'm excited for you. Twenty of Harrow the Ninth. Trying to get my audiobook finished while I work. 119 to a house with good bones. Jasmine is on their last read of Spookopoly. I think I'm feeling super, like, not unmotivated, but I'm feeling less motivation than normal because I know that I don't have to read anything today. That is... That is... I, can't, I have no words for what that is. Like, damn... Damn. Not liquid cheese. Never liquid cheese. 50 pages. Oh, don't even talk to me about pumpkins. I've had them inside because we don't have a front garden and there's no point me putting them in the back because like obviously I'm not going to enjoy them in the back garden. I only go out there to let Brie go to the toilet. So I put them like on the fireplace, which is great, but they've started to shrivel really badly. So like they're literally only just going to last tonight and they'll be going in the bin straight away tomorrow. We need it. It doesn't fine by me. Liquid cheese is like a collection of chemicals <laughs> that tastes vaguely cheese flavoured. <laughs> It's grim. 
Um, you don't have to, no. Um, I would say not to do that, probably. The only, you can do that for DNF, so like if you DNF a book 100 pages in, you can log it as um, <clears throat> that you read it for a prompt and how far in you got. But if you don't finish a book, I would say just don't bother filling in the form. <clears throat> yeah, I think so. Um, it's about the same as Savage Langs. The, the they were yeah, they're both the, the same from what I remember. I'm only a hundred pages into this and it's the same. So I don't have any um like revolutionary thoughts. Oof. Y'all are attacking me. I'm gonna wrap these prints up early if we're gonna go with the, the cheese attacks. <laughs> so shocked that something like liquid cheese exists. We don't have it so much here. Um I do we do have it like if you go to a burger place and you get like cheese and bacon fries, it tends to be liquid cheese. I'm not a big fan. Um, but sometimes you can't avoid it, but I would never have liquid cheese by choice. I have not, but that sounds amazing. <laughs> uh, been feeling really slumpy today so far. I might not finish my final book. My final roll being a double really screwed me over. Yeah, I've actually had no doubles this entire month, which is surprising. This is it. You know, like the um, plastic, oh, well... They're not plastic. The cheese slices that you can get um, for burgers, they're called burger slices, and they're not real cheese. They're like congealed liquid cheese, I would say. But um, they're like individual packaged like slices of cheese. I used to love those when I was a kid, but just like eating them by themselves. I call them plastic cheese because they're not cheese. <laughs> but that was the only cheese that Curtis had in his house when we met, just cheese slices. And I was like, these are barely acceptable on a burger. But like, to, for that to be the only cheese, the only cheese, I can't. Is that what Kraft cheese is? Oh, I love a baby bell. Yeah, they don't taste like anything and they just kind of dissolve in your mouth. But like I loved, I, I would, I could eat a pack of those, but they're not like cheese. Uh, I think so, maybe. I thought they were universally called plastic cheese. <laughs> Just enough cheese to be legally called cheese. <laughs> Damn, Curtis made me, when I first met Curtis, he made me a cheese toasty with those and I was like, this is, it's not cheese. <laughs> it's not cheese. Okay, I'm glad it's not just me. No. To be fair, I think I liked things like this when I was a kid because any excuse to eat just cheese and that'd be the main event and not have to eat it with something. It's a cheese product. Oh my God. Wow. Less than 51%, damn. That's horrifying. Oh my god. I could eat a block of cheese. Like, I love cheese. I don't think a day goes by where I don't eat cheese. Did I have cheese yesterday? I have no idea what happened yesterday. I must have had cheese for lunch yesterday because I had hardly anything in. I had a bagel with cream cheese and bacon for lunch. So I did have some type of cheese yesterday. And today I'm having cheese on pasta. We just got, we just replaced the cheese. We've got mild cheddar, I think, in at the minute, and some parmesan and some mature cheddar as well. Literally, I'm very committed to cheese. <laughs> I do have 
Okay, next sprint. I'm kind of awake now, so I feel like we can read again. Cheese does not sound like a real word, word anymore. You're right, Shannon. <gasps> oh, we cheese. Okay, this is a small one. It is 25. We've had lots of like very mid sprints today. Oh, I love Red Lester. Red Lester's great for cheese on toast. Right. Once again, enough cheese. <laughs> enough cheese talk. I'll see you all in 25 minutes.
Hello. How did it go? I am on page 118 now, so I read 20 in that one. And I started the sprint by making my cup of tea. Mm. It's good. I always worry this is the biscuit tea from Yorkshire tea and it has to be sweet for me. I have my tea sweet anyway. I have like a flat spoon of sugar um, or sweetener because I don't like sugar in drinks. But um, this one has to be just a little bit sweeter for it to be good. And I worried that it wasn't going to be. I'm putting this on my legs so that it warms me up. Oh, that's nice. Oh, maybe I could get a hot water bottle out tonight. That'd be nice. Um, I hope you enjoyed your films. That is definitely the vibe of today. 25, 7%, 27, more pages. Final Climax, this book is so good. Forgot how much I love this world. Good to know. Finished editing my Spook Opal Film vlog. Nice. 21, and answered lots of messages. Good, good, good. I kind of wish I'd done a workout this morning um because then I actually I like working out like I feel best working out after dinner because obviously dinner is the biggest meal so I have the most energy but I like working out in the morning because then it's done and after dinner I can just curl into especially because I'm having pasta I can just curl into a ball and sleep that would be great 35, a breakfast and scroll with my phone, 22, hot oh, hot bottle. Mm. It's that kind of weather I was going to check the heat in because I feel like it should be on because this is the first time that I've been cold and like not my heating's good like I have my thermostat set to 21 degrees so um it's normally warm um, I can't work out before dinner because I um, don't have enough energy. Like, because I do high intensity interval training, like, unless I eat before I work out, which I don't want to do because I've already rationed out my calories for the day. I can't eat anything else. So um, I don't have the energy to work out before dinner. Because, like, literally the worst time of day for me in general is before dinner because I just want to, I've just finished work. I just want to eat. Like, that's all I want. Oh, I see. I shower once a day, but it doesn't matter when. I actually really like showering in the morning. I like washing my hair in the morning because then it can dry naturally and I feel, like, really refreshed throughout the day. Um, but, yeah, like, yesterday I worked out in the middle of the afternoon just because I stopped an activity and I was like, well, before I do the next activity, I'm actually going to get my workout out of the way because I've been struggling the last week or so with the weather change to find the motivation to do it. And I also had a cold last week, if you guys remember. So, um, yeah, yesterday I did it at like 1 p.m. And then I had a shower and got back changed into the clothes I was wearing and carried on with my day. Life admin sucks. I keep looking at my um, form that I have to fill in for my vaccinations to Thailand. I don't think I'm actually going to end up needing any, but I need to fill in the form and take it back just in case. Oh, I also need to order my medication. <laughs> I just keep forgetting to do both. Mmm, Bill Sub Juices. For me, I, um, I normally do shower somewhat before bed because, like, I eat at about six and then I work out at about seven so normally like I actually eat about 5 30 and I work out at about 6 30 but it depends how long it takes to make dinner I start cooking at five um so then I'm having a shower at about half eight or half seven depending on when I started working out so then I just put my pajamas on but I couldn't like if I waited till 10 when I'm going to bed um I could not I would not have the energy to shower it's drying for me i hate drying and i always have i hope you enjoy your candles when they arrive 
Um, most of Etsy is clear if you ordered between Friday and Monday, your order's been sent. There was just a couple of orders that came through yesterday that haven't gone. And then I'll start on the website probably tomorrow, I think. Unless I run out of boxes, which I might do, they should all be done by Friday for sure. Um, and then I'm actually going to order to do a new restock straight away of winter candles. I've actually really enjoyed, well, I always really enjoy making candles, especially at a more relaxed pace. It's when I'm doing them like back to back and trying to keep to a like bi-weekly schedule that I get um, stressed about it. Wow, that is impressive for like one day. There's a serious amount of films. I don't have the attention span for movies. I can only really watch one. And that's a struggle <laughs> to me to find like two hours to sit and watch one. This tea is good though, y'all. Um, that's a very good question. I actually, because I'm not doing any launches for the rest of the year, everything will just be candles that I've done before. So, um, I'm going to do what I did with the autumn one where I just order candles and wax, see what I have in the cupboards from, from the winter ranges, make those and then order more afterwards to top it up. I just find that easier to do because I hate stock taking um but we'll have winter is coming I can't remember what any of them like what any of the official scents are like I can smell them in my brain but I can't tell you what any of the scents are because I've forgotten it's been a while um but winter is coming I'm pretty sure has clove in it um or is that one spearmint it might be spearmint and clove <laughs> um I'll do the winter solstice one which is brown sugar and fig what else is there? The Christmas ones. There's like a vanilla cookie one, which I'm pretty sure is a Bath and Body Works dupe. Is there a clove one of those? Like red berry and clove, maybe? I'm trying to think as well because those ones are hard because I only do them once a year. There was something else. Oh, I do have a, it depends if I can get the fragrance oil for, for it. I have a um, Winter Night Trilogy one as well, which is like a salted, is it salted caramel fudge maybe? That's like a real rich, sweet scent. What else do I have? This is what I mean when I was like, I'll just make up what I've got and then see what else I have that's wintry. Um, because I don't, I, right now I have no recollection of what I'm actually making because I have so many candles as well. Um, like I, I have over 90 different candles that I make. It's just going through them all and working it out and working out what 15 to select to make 150 of is just so much. I just use up what I've got and then find some more winter ones to fill the gaps. It's because you have a break in the middle. Like I can watch like many... 45 minute episodes of shows and get up every 45 minutes and do something but I can't sit for two hours and watch a movie and I don't feel like I feel like it's unnatural to pause a movie hot candles like they're gold we have lots of um candle hoarders in in the chat um oh lady death is a very very good one you have very good taste that is one of my favorite ones for sure um i want to do i feel like i'm going to do like a winter themed restock and then if i have time to do another restock i'll do more like miscellaneous stuff um just because i'm like really struggling to think what i have that's wintry right now i feel like i have a lot of autumnal themed things and at the minute, for some reason, I can think, like, I keep thinking about the Nevermore set that I have, and I really want to do those, but they're very much spring. And because I'm doing such limited restocks right now, I kind of do want to do, like, a full winter one. So we'll see what happens, but you're definitely getting winter solstice. Solstice, winter is coming. And providing I can still get all of the fragrances, you'll be getting the usual as a four Christmas ones. 
Um, I'm just looking what I've got around me. They're all autumnal ones, to be fair, from Sarah J. Mass, though. But yeah, we'll see. Okay. Um, they're mine. They're the candles that I have. Are the ones that go wrong with the experiments and um, the prototypes are all the candles that I use. Oh, I remember that. Damn, I couldn't even tell you what that was called, like what the fragrance is on that anymore. But wow, that was a long time ago. Okay. Could be our final sprint, depends how long it is. I want a good, I'll get a good shake on this. If not the final sprint, we'll have one more after this because it is a 20 minute sprint. And then there'll be one more after that. Watch the last one be an hour. This always happens to me. No, that's not what I meant to do. There we go. Okay, I'll see you all in 20.
Hello. I did read a bit. I'm on page 134. Um, but I'm looking for a Halloween workout to do today. And I'm not finding any. Ooh, that is a good upper body though. I like that track list. But it's not Halloween. I can't find a Halloween ride. So now I'm looking for Halloween strength. But I don't, I'm definitely not doing an hour of strength. Why? Can I see the collections? Okay. Yeah, they do have a full collection. So at least there's that. <sighs> can't do running and I can't do rowing. How is he doing yoga and scuba gear? I don't want to do 30 minutes of yoga. This is just going to be me being like, I don't want to. Ugh. Yeah, no. How are we doing? 24. Three chaps of Swim and Book Club. Not sure how many pages, but reading Dead Soul by Stephen King. Nice. Hi, how you doing? I don't blame you, Nina. It's a very sleepy day. Listening to some more of Night of the Seven Kingdoms sat in my comfy chair. Love that. I can't remember if it was SJM. But yeah, that was a long time ago. That's one of the first things I ever did. Um, 20 and 20 minutes, but this sprint was not just not long enough. When I'm desperate to finish my book, I'm sorry. Happy Halloween. Steak and pepper slice, that sounds amazing. Very offended. 20 minute full body stretch, that's a bit much. Where's Hannah Corbin's? I think I liked her playlist, but I don't love her. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be the one. Oh, but it's hard though. She's one of those that I never expect her rides to be hard, and then I'm like, well, damn. I'm going to die here. Um, so I'll do that. And I will also do the 20 minute um, upper body that I just said. Because I like the, um, well, to be fair, I do most of Kelly's workouts anyway. But I also like the playlist. Oh, I do have pop punk Pilates here, though. Nah, I'll save that for when I get to it. Please. There we go. Cool. That's sorted. That should speed. I think after when I finish sprints, I'm going to put my workout gear on to cook in then after dinner I don't have to like motivate myself to get changed because I'm already changed I always say that though and then I never do um hour and 15 left, minutes left in my book selfishly hoping for an hour sprint how could you <clears throat> it's a write off reading wise it's fine it's the end of the month I'm saying that having already finished my books and then some though, so. Um, I don't do Les Mills anymore. I stopped doing that like two years ago now. I do Peloton now. Uh, started You Could Be Pretty, could, no, You Could Be So Pretty by Holly Bourne. First time I'm reading one of her books. I hope you enjoy it. Just started The Wager. Oh, but they're so good. 
I really, really like them. They used to do them at Morrison's in like the pie counter and they don't anymore. And it's really upsetting because those were the best. Um, and now they just do boring steak. And I don't like boring steak because that is like, there's the gravy is weak. You need the pepper. Cute. I love that. Enjoy your spooky grocery store adventure. Get some, go to Trader Joe's and get something nice for me. Finished my risk assessment, non-related work chat with my manager for 10 minutes and started my next module. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. If this next sprint ends up being an hour, then I may end up just going getting changed anyway. <laughs> to save myself time later. See, I wonder, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so cold. And it's because I'm wearing a crop jumper with nothing underneath. Ooh, Fatima of the Opera, nice. I hope you enjoy. Um, I always buy extra large ones anyway. So I don't know. And they're not round, I can tell you that. I struggled to find one that was good for carving because they were all wonky. Good idea. Use the board one last time just to see what book to read next. Don't expect to finish it, but I got the day off, so I'm taking advantage and started a new book for the day. You should. That's what I did as well. I rolled with the intention of picking something to start um, and finish in November. It happened that I ended up with a really quick read, though. So I am 135 over 400 into it. I'm really happy about that. I don't intend to read at all when I'm done with sprints. So, um, but this is all bonus reading anyway, because I only intended to read this in November, so I'm not mad about it. Oh, Morrison's be like that, though. Morrison's is the best, like, conventional, like, proper supermarket for, um, like, meat, fruit, vegetables, and that kind of thing. Like, the, the veggies and stuff's really good from Morrison's. It's my favourite one, but it's, like, 20, well, I love Big Asda as well, but that's different. Big Asda's for the selection and the prices. Morrison's is for the quality of like the meat and the veg. Asda's got the worst veg. Tesco veg, not great. Little, decent. Um, I never shopped at Sainsbury's. I've never lived close to one, so I can't judge Sainsbury's. Just finished Fourth Wing Reread. Now I have two more books to finish today. Um i liked it i gave it four stars pretty much the same as the first book really uh the ending was great and i'm really excited for book three also need to do some tarot spreads tonight too nice um apparently i heard that the veil is the thinnest that it's ever been like literally ever um across the last like while i think it's been like a month up until like the early november um, so essentially if you hear someone calling your name, then they probably are. Ooh, I always do Big Asda because it's easy to get everything in one place, but maybe I should do Morrison's this year. Oh my God, that's so much snow. Oh my God, grit is hard. Grit is hella hard. I um I want to start cross training more. I want to do cardio that isn't spin, but I can't do cardio that isn't spin. Like I don't have any coordination. I have no desire to run. Um, I don't have a rowing machine, and I'm not interested in joining the gym. Um, and I just don't have. I'm I'm built for comfort, not speed, baby. Like I'm not I'm not jumping up and down on the spot. Like that's just not for me. So I I can't do dance because I have no coordination. Um, I tried body combat. I've got no coordination. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's because of my hips. Like, my hips are starting to get stiff in my old age, which is why I was like, maybe I should cross-train a bit more. Um, but, I'm yeah, I'm not, I'm not cardioing. Nope, not jumping. Not jumping. I'm it's really bad for your body actually like I've never been able to run it's never been for me I got too much that bounces not happening um and it's also really bad for your joints I want to be that bitch that gets up at six in the morning and goes for a run and feels fabulous but it's just not in my future 
I would do a marathon or like a half marathon in my life though. Just once to say I have done it. Um, I I don't like it. I like because there's the Kendall does the arms and like the arms and weight. She does a boxing section in that. Don't like it. Mm -mm. There's this also coordination. It's not. I don't like it. I've never, when I tell you, I've never ever enjoyed cardio. I'm not a cardio person. The only thing that I've ever done, enjoyed and stuck to is spin. I used to do boxer size, hated it. Um, like I said, I've tried, uh, oh my God, what's it called? I've literally just said it. Body combat, which is mixed martial arts and like cardio, hate it. Uh, <laughs> like spin is the only one that I like. Yep, yeah, shin splints are the worst. Absolutely not. Nope, 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 nope. Even when I chased, I hit the ground and made myself heavier. <laughs> nope, that's dancing. Don't want to dance. I don't know what that is, but I have no desire to. Viral trends is the same as your, your dieting. Like, it's not a thing. Like what's the i just don't i don't do anything viral like what's the point it's like a hot thing for two seconds and then it, people pretend like it doesn't exist like okay let's roll i've never been a cardio like mm, i can do weights i'll do weights all day like the only it's just cardio that I really just don't struggle with I've never ever ever been coordinated or fast um and the speed at which cardio is done is too fast for me and any slower is not cardio because I do have a relative like level of fitness because I do work out I'm just not I'm not walking I'll walk outside thank you no that's horror no I've even tried just like general aerobics and um no. See, yeah, like I just walked my dog for walking. Walking inside, I don't get it for me. Like I walk outside. <laughs> when I wanna walk, I walk outside. I don't do treadmill. Um that's fair. I have my own weights and that's the thing that restricts me a lot. Like I don't go to the gym, so I have to buy my own weights, and that's expensive, so I need to level up my heavy weights now and get, um, like, a kilo heavier, but I don't want to, because the heavier you go, the more expensive they are. Um, oh, see, I'm the opposite. Like, I'm not walking indoors, but I'm not biking outside. I do like a, a touristy cycle, but I'm not, I'm not cycling outside. Cyclists are my nemesis when I'm driving and I cannot join I cannot join them. Oh I do want to I do want to try that. Yeah, aerobics is not fun. It's not. I did um uh what did I do? I, I tried is it Rebecca Kennedy? Um she has is that even an instructor? I decided very quickly I don't like her though. Um she does strength classes. It's not Bex Gentry, but she is blonde. Rebecca Kennedy. I did one of her Halloween strength classes last year, and it was aerobics, and I hated it. Like, I am 10 steps behind them, crashing into the obstacles in my house, and I didn't know. And then I felt, I felt catfished, and I will never do a class from her again. Um, I don't want to, like, <laughs> I don't want to do more reps, I do classes, I don't just sit there and do, like, 10 reps of something, or, like, more reps of something, um, I, I've, I've had the weights that I've had for so long that I need to increase weight, like, I can lift more than I used to. Um... Okay. Last sprint of the readathon. I hope you enjoy. Um, I shall be reading, I think. And I'll see you all in 30 minutes.
Hello, we can get rid of this now because we are done. How did you do in your final sprint? I read 151 gauges today overall, which ain't too bad. It could have been better, it could have easily been much worse. Make sure all of my camera battery is charged. Look how covered in dog hair I am after wrestling with Brie on the couch all day. <clears throat> wow. Bye, Amberly. Thank you for joining. 200 pages left for the day. You've still got a lot of the day left, though. Two, another 200 till you finish your book. Ooh, banana bread. That sounds good. Oh, I know where you are. Yeah. 55, almost finished now, so I'll probably keep going after sprints. Good. Do a little walk out, workout, walking and weights. My first workout since my shoulder surgery. Good. 130, wheel of time six. Still need to order that book. Finished my book update in my spreadsheet. Love that. We're on 2,853. Um, books so far. The X Hex is still the most red one with um, 17, but I need to fix it because some people put the author in and that corrupts the data. So I can get the ones that say, that I can see and fix them, but obviously I can't do it for every book. It's only the ones I already know are in the lead. And they've got left seven. It's weird that lots of people, like the only discrepancy in it is that some people have put um, the author in. Nobody said XX instead of the XX, which I would expect. But yeah, the, the XX has been read 20 times. That's our most read book. Our fastest reader, the person who's read the most books, is the same person who read the most books last year, which is Courtney. Um, last year, Courtney read 81 books. This year, Courtney has read 70. We are at 963,386 pages total. A. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that for you. 10 pages, had to respond to work emails. Oh no, you do indeed. I'm probably, well, I will end up reading a little bit. I'll end up um, reading a chapter in bed tonight. Uh, but aside from that, my plan is to put my workout gear on so I'm ready. Make dinner, eat dinner, work out, shower. I need to wash my hair because I'm filming tomorrow um watch scream 2 and if by any chance it's not before 10 it's not after 10 o'clock which it will be um i want to play dead by daylight as well but that might be a bit much i know courtney is on it you are welcome thank you for everybody who took part this year it was a little bit of a different one i really enjoyed it this is the first time I've fully like been able to read horrors and thrillers and stuff in October, mainly because I don't do Bookopoly anymore. And also it's definitely my, well, it's my best reading month of all time. So definitely my most successful Bookopolathon book, Bookopolathon today. Um, but I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to go get myself ready to enjoy the rest of my Halloween. Hope you all had a great time with the readathon. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, thanks for hanging out. And yeah, I'll see y'all when I see you. Happy Halloween, guys. Bye.